tribe, welcome to HGDC, HG Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel. Now, my intro's been going through a couple of changes. So all I'm gonna say for today is, I'm a crochet designer, I've released three patterns and that makes my heart sing. And I'm spending a lot of time helping others just like you how to make patterns, whether that is to pick up somebody else's and make the the item in the pattern or whether you want to design your own and I'm going to tidy all that up one day and have it just roll off the tongue but for now that's what you're here for <laughs> um this is October in review October 2020 in review I'm going to tell you all about the patterns I've worked on what I've finished what I've released and um, what is coming in the next few months and beyond new things that I've purchased, acquisitions, um, and a few life updates in amongst all that. I think that pretty much covers it all. Um, so if you are brand new, hi, hello, and welcome to the tribe. It's so good to have you here. You can expect lots of crochet, lots of granny squares, and just the most amazing community because the tribe is just wonderful. And if you are already a subscribing member of the tribe, thank you so, so much for returning. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that you are all tickety-boo wherever you are in the world. Um, I think I'm just going to go in straight with the, like, how are you? How are things in your part of the world? How are things in your world? I've got loads of crochet to show starting with i released a pattern this month called invested it is a vest made out of granny squares i don't have it to hand but editing me will put a picture on the screen for you um that got released quite quietly in all honesty because october has been giving me a bit of a kicking in that it's much darker so in the uk and across europe um we get a lot less sunlight in the winter months but for me from like end of september to february those months are a lot lot harder than the summertime waking up to the dark cold miserable oh it, it honestly and in ways i can't even explain it brings me down so one of the things I did do was patch this lamp, but you can just see. And what that lamp does is it stimulates the sunrise in the morning. So I naturally, in the summertime, wake up around 5 to 5.30 a.m. And I'm happy to do that. And my mornings are my time. It's my indulgent time. And I get up and it's my time for my prayers, for my journal. It's my time to listen to a podcast and learn something, which is one of my favourite things to do. It's just my time for me, and whilst I'm listening to a podcast, I will work on a project, so I get quite a bit done in like the first hour of my day. I've had that hour of doing, of working on what's really important to me, and so I know I'm always going to have a good day. And now I have this sunrise lamp. I tried it. It's been a week today that I had it, and... I am now back to waking up at 5.30 a.m. and back into my morning routine. I am working on a blanket which I've been asked to make. I don't know if they're going to be watching this or not, so I'm not going to share all the details, but I am going to show yarn because they ain't going to know it's for them until they got it. Um, but these are some of the colours I've been playing with. It is the GPA's yarn, the Colour Crafter, and they are all pretty much in here. Um, ooh, I just realised I bought, I've been working on it and I was thinking, hmm, might not have enough of the joining colour, but looking in here, I've got more than I realised. So I decided to go with like a light pink, which is colour 1240. I went with this Parma Violet, which is colour 1432, 1432. The joining colour is this off-white which is 10.01 1001 um, and then I also got this green which is 1316 color 1316 and I got the blue 
which is colour 1034. They've got names but I'm not going to butcher them for you. And then I've got a darker pink, can you see that? Which is colour 1130. And then there's also a yellow, which I only bought one ball of for some reason. And the project is... I bought a yellow. Ah, I'll show you it in here. I got that yellow, and once I find the code, I'll put it below. And I've just been playing with the different... I went with... Um, hang on. Hang on. Let me show you these. So we've got this, joined in this, with the yellow as well, to make a blanket. I was asked to do a granny square blanket. No problem. No problem, no problem. I love to make a granny square. Um, and so I was playing around with the different orders for the colours. And you'll be pleased to know that it means that I've started recording the video I've promised for a long time, which is on how I pick my colours. And then how I batch make my granny squares. So I'm making... 30 squares which are I think they're nine rounds each I don't have it to show you and I'm not going to show it just in case the recipient is looking I'm going to take some footage of it and after it's been gifted I will put it into a future vlog um, but I kind of went with this colour way only I decided to it's very similar to this let's leave it at that um, and then join in the off-white and I have made all 30 squares other than I think 19 of them need their final round and then they could be joined in and I've joined the first row so that's a lot because I've basically done that this weekend like my wrist knows I've done that this weekend so I'm really enjoying making a granny square blanket and it's just what I need right now because I don't need to think about it. It is just the same repetitive motion which is beautiful. So I've been working on that. Um, it's going to be a Christmas gift but I wanted to get it done now um, just because I don't want to leave it too late and be stressing or anything like that. So I'm working on that. I got all of the yarn from Wool Warehouse. Um, I bought two balls of every colour apart from the yellow and I bought four balls of the white the creamy off-white and I'm hoping that will be enough to get me through that project maybe I've also been working on this I've shown you this before it's called Big and uh, it is these big granny squares which are going to make a chunky jumper sweater if you're not from the UK um, and I used up yarn that one of my friends sent to me. She said that she had a load of acrylic yarn, she's never going to use it up. Um, she likes to work with that good stuff, you know. And would I take it? Yeah, I'll take it. So I got a bag like this size stuffed full of um, double knit Aran and a little bit of chunky. So there's two different colourways because I didn't have a lot of the yellow. Um, most of this yarn is double knit, held double, but there was some chunky in there, the orange. Uh, I can't really remember, but some of this was chunky. So that got to that point and then I hit a... I stopped because I was like, in my head I couldn't envisage how it was going to move forward because I wanted a certain design element and then that came to me a couple of days ago and I was like, ah. so I've got this back out of hiding and I'm now putting them together as you can see. Um, and again, it's just granny square, so I don't really need to think because I can do the treble stitch with my eyes closed. 
So that's coming, and I think that one might end up coming out maybe January. I'd like to get the, the thicker, heavier ones out in the winter months just so they could be made, but that is kind of illogical because if you're in like Australia, you probably ain't gonna wanna, well, if you're in Australia, do you ever need a winter jumper? But anyway, this country is the other side of the world that when I'm in my summertime, they are in their winter. So there's still people out there that will use these patterns and you can always get a head start for your wardrobe next year. But anyway, I'm working on the basis of getting the bigger patterns out sooner. I have been working on oh, so many good projects to tell to show you. Revival is my grey square jumper and so I've been working on this second version. I have decided to go with the block granny squares because it's less ends and I know the ends really bother people. So I've done that. I've made it bigger than my previous one as well. I wanted it quite oversized. Um, this pink jumper is completely blaring out, distorting all colours. But I wanted to make it bright to feel whatever this is, pizzazz. Um, so I've done the block granny squares and this one, rather than having the cow neck, is just gonna have a simple crew neck, um, which I'm gonna do a little tutorial for so that anybody that has brought the pattern can make another variation or anyone that thinks, hmm, the cow neck's not really for me, you can make it into a different neckline so that you will get use out of it. Um, so that is what is coming November, end of November. I've also got so many patterns on the go that I kind of just decided ceasefire rather than focus on getting another one out for November. I'm going to pull back a little bit, get a lot of these to the point where they can be released and then I think quite possibly January. I either, I've got two choices, have a pattern bars here and release loads or I just have a steady amount to release up until like, it'll probably get me through to June next year. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think because I've got, I'll show you the patterns that I'm hoping to bring out December and then everything else after that can come out as and when. So I could just release loads of them in January, which would be fun. Give us all something to look forward to and work on. Um, so I've been working on the second revival. That's the second revival you know about. I've just got like this much on one sleeve and then I've done like this much on the other sleeve. So just the sleeves and then I can record doing the neck and I can start wearing that one. And then I've got these two as well. So let's go with this one. This is Inspirited. It's a cardigan. I'm making it hugely oversized and I'm holding two strands of double knit together to make it chunky. Um, and it's going to be just a simple granny stripe cardigan. I originally made this in grey with a really colourful back and elbow patches, so any long term viewers will remember that. I decided to go chunky on it because I wanted it to be something that you could really snuggle in because it's snuggle season here and um, I'm enjoying working with chunky and watching it really build. So I've gone with that. The yarn I'm using is double knit. It's from the pound shop and it's dusky pink. Um, and that is a joy to watch grow. Here's one of the sleeves for revival. I got so many projects. <laughs> And I just want to get some of them cleared off. Um, so, yeah. Revival will be done for November. Inspirited and Enamoured, my other cardigan, which is Granny Square cardigan. I want them to come out in December. Um, Big might come out in January. This one should be coming out in January as well. I love this one. This is my stash busting jumper. I'm just gonna hold it there so you can take it all in. 
I love it. I love it so much. I love it. I love it. I love it. I absolutely adore the pops of colour. I absolutely love it. This pattern is called example because it is the example that I grade in my size grading workbook that I'm putting together. So for anyone that is unsure of those terms, size grading is where you take a base pattern such as this, a design that you have in your head, and then you need to turn it into all of the sizes from extra small to 5XL so you can sell that pattern. And so I'm putting a workbook together so that you can use it, go through it with your designs and grade your patterns. And as an example, so you could see how to do certain steps, I, <laughs> I basically made this. So the first few pages and my workbook, I've printed off the draft. Look at that, all that information to share with you. Um, the front page is underworks so it's got scribbles on it but for now it looks like this only it'll be in colour so there's pink on there um it takes you through like all of the um terminology you need to know um we then go through designing your own pattern so for some people you've got patterns in your mind you know what you want to put out there and for other people they want a bit more help on um putting together a pattern that reflects them, their values, their niche. Um, because when you think of HDDC, you think granny squares, you think pink, you think stash busting. I hope you do, because that's what I'm going for. Um, <laughs> but other people need a little bit of help sort of getting that aesthetic. So that's all in here, like where to find your inspiration, um, all bits and pieces on copyright and the importance and then all of the factors to consider in your design whether that's the movement, the shape, um, the purpose, the yarn type, like it's all here. And then there's a page where I show you the, um, let me cover this up, I can't show you all the stuff today the um, design spec so I take you through all the factors for you to consider and then I've put together a design spec which is here and on that design spec I um, put a as we're going through all the factors I'm like you could do this or you could do that and as we went through an idea formed for a jumper so I've put the um, line drawing there and then I've also underneath it I have put all of the factors and I've got a list there of stuff for you to pay attention to um, and then all of the factors and how I apply them to this example. And then as there's also then a blank page that you can do the same. Um, so it's got your design spec, it's got all of the details and you put in everything in there so it's got the, your gauge swatch which I teach you how to do so don't worry about that I just threw yarn at the tripod sorry um well I didn't throw I knocked it I never throw yarn um the inspiration the intended use of the garment the construction type like it's all there and so because I did that and then when I went into the next section the actual numbers of how to grade it I've put screenshots in of like, um, let's find a good one to show you. It's all like very handheld. I hold your hand the whole way through. I explain everything into detail, great detail. Just like I do on my revival pattern, like everything you need to know is there. Um, and so I've then put screenshots in of my spreadsheet as I'm grading this pattern so that you can check your understanding, you can follow along and you can apply the same to your own pattern. And so because of that, at the end of this workbook, 
I had a pattern there and I'd graded it, like graded the whole thing to show you how to do it. So I thought, well, I'll make it to prove that it works. Um, and then I may as well release the pattern. So this is example and I love it. I absolutely love it. So my premise of my design was stash busting. Um, influenced by Lage, and I'll put her username, Instagram handle here. She does similar but with knitting. Um, and I have got, and you probably do too, lots of random bits of yarn that is not enough to make anything other than maybe a scrap yarn blanket or something like that. And I wanted to put it all into a mega project. So what I did, I got all of my scrap yarn and I made it into these huge balls like this. And this one, well it was huge, they were like, I've used them into this. And I have held all of my double knit scraps, double with a strand of black four ply, which you can see there. And that has given it that cohesiveness that I love. And it also mutes down the colours and just ties it all in together. Honestly, I'm so impressed with this. So, so impressed. Um, and so, I decided to make a really oversized stash busting jumper. Again, I just wanted it to be super cosy, super functional. Um, you can wear this with like leather look uh, leggings or you can just wear it with simple leggings for a cozy day, leather look leggings for like, I mean where do we go nowadays if you go to the supermarket or if you're in an area where you can go to a pub or something, a restaurant um, and it's got all of these colours in there. I love it and then I decided to make the seam um, part of the design and so I held black with the black four ply which actually makes this project Aran weight because I've held double knit and four ply um, which I think in America you call it fingering weight instead like suck yarn um, I made the seam a feature and I think that looks amazing and when it's finished it will be on both of the sleeves um, it will be around the neckline and it will be around the hemline it's not quite finished just because I'm going to record when I put those bits on because I recorded how I added the sleeve and I've recorded um, this and I'm going to record the neckline just to show you how to do it because I know when you're a beginner some of these patterns look like gobbledygook and you just you don't have a clue so I'm trying to put as many supportive tutorials up there as well. So I've made a good start on that and there's only a little bit to do. Um, the workbook needs a final read through and then I've probably got about, I think I've got about three or four hours worth of work left to do on it. And then, and then I can send it to my tech editor. And also I've been speaking to different people asking them if they will be part of a feedback group so that I can give this to real life crocheters and then they can um, spend some time with it and apply it and see how easy it is to use, what their feedback is, their criticism so that I can make sure that it's spot on for when I release it to the public. Um, I had thought that I would have it out in October just because I did underestimate how much I wanted to put in it. Um, I didn't account for the fact that October I wouldn't really be feeling myself. Um, and I've also gone on and added additional stuff. So I'm going to have a separate workbook that then covers how, um, how to get your pattern tech edited, tested, and then your release schedule. So I have a pre, a mid, like a during, and a post launch schedule for my patterns. And all of that will be in there as well, like the calendar templates, everything. Um, so this in effect is part one of four. 
the size grading. Then you've got the actual um, the size grading covers all of the term terminology, your design, um, writing it up, making the sample, and you've seen like that's a decent amount of information in there. I know so much. Oh my goodness. Um, and then the next part is going to be about getting it tech edited, tested, and then how to have a successful launch. And then I've also got the other half that I'm going to be doing in the form of two more workbooks. I'm just going to cover your branding, your niche, um, niching, your mindset. It's going to cover all of that good stuff, your finances in these two other workbooks and they will be coming later on next year. So I'm hoping to get this one finished and the the second part about tech editing, testing, launch done um, so that I can release them January. I'm, that's what I'm working towards but I want to give the feedback group enough time because Christmas is coming up. I don't want to be like you've got four weeks but then they've got other stuff going on and I mean I know we're not all going places and stuff but I just don't want it to be too time pressured so hopefully January but if not it'll be soon and I know a lot of you are really really interested in, in these workbooks um, and so I, w I would definitely say sign up to my newsletter um, because I will keep giving updates on what's been included and what you can expect and I'm also thinking about doing like an excerpt, so like sending out a few pages from it so that you can see it. Um, and then I would just say keep checking here and Instagram because I will keep posting updates. So this is example. And I know you've all got plenty of stash to make one of these. Um, and then I had the idea of holding a fluffy yarn with four ply. So I went and had a look for fluffy yarn and I discovered there was quite a few. So I bought these different ones to do some swatching with. So we have got the Sheepier's Sweetheart Soft. It's 100% polyester. This one is color 12 and it, I think this one is a chunky and it calls for um, a size five to six needle or hook and it's 100 grams. Now they all had varying um, prices and what I've done is I've bought one ball of four different ones and I'm going to make um, a couple of different swatches and just see how the fabric works up and then I will hold it with a strand of um, sock yarn and it's how I'm going to use up some of my sock yarn scraps. So I got this one and I quite like that it's got this little label on it like easy start start here um it's so soft and fluffy and I love teddy stuff I've got teddy bed sheets and oh it's just another a winter joy so I got that one I got this black which is King Cole Cuddles and that's chunky it comes in a 50 gram ball and it's 100% polyester and it says to go with 6 mil needles which is US 10 and it's the only one I bought in black just because I th thought that it's got fluff from the other fibre um, working with black and then a novel yarn like this might cause me to pull my hair out But I really really like it. That's colour 302. I also went with this one that's molting everywhere, the Sheepier's Softy. It is 75% polyester, 25% nylon, a 50 gram ball and it calls for a 4mm needle or hook and it says it's Aran weight. Um, and then I went, oh let me tell you the colour, it's colour 480. And then I went with this one, and that one really molts, like it's molting. This one is the Sardar Snuggly, it's chunky, 50 grams, 
It's called Teddy Bear and it's shade 0201, so 201. It's so soft. And again, this one calls for a 5.5mm um, and it's a chunky. Got three chunkies and one Arim. Um, I'm most excited about this one. And this one. And then this one. And then this one. Um, but I want to... I couldn't find a double knit one, but I want to have a go at making this in fluffy at some point. But for now, I'm not going to start any more projects. These I'm putting to one side. I have two weeks off over Christmas and I've put these on my bookshelf and once I get to those two weeks this is going to be my treat to myself. Um, just because I want to get some more projects finished up before I start something else. Um, definitely want like the bulk of what's around me done. Um, which is about seven weeks away so we'll see how much I get done. And then I've also been and got a couple of books and a magazine which I'll quickly show you. I did get this magazine, it's the Vogue knitting one. I was on the Vogue knit panel um, in early October and so I decided to pick up a copy of the magazine and I really really like it. It's a little bit pricey but it's worth it. It's got Gigi Made It in it this issue as well. Um, it's got the it's got the Black Girl Knit Club in here, and I did do a Zoom chat with them um, during the first lockdown in March sometime. Um, next door is decorating, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry. Uh, and then I also had a good look and there's loads of inspiration so if I do end up making something out of that I will show you but it was just nice to see a different um it's the most annoying noise now because he has started decorating again and that noise is going to be infuriating I am going to stop here I have one more thing to mention and that is throughout November and December on HDDC I'm running a new series and it's called C2C and that's for crochet to cash and it's all about turning your passion into a side hustle or an income stream whatever you want to call it and it's for all of those whether you want to just make yarn money um, or whether you want it to be to supplement your income or whether you want to do it full time it is um, all about different ways that you can do that and I've got so many different people coming to the channel as well I'm not going to announce any names right now but what I'm going to say is make sure you follow me on Instagram which is at hgdesignscrochet um, because I will be putting up on my stories um, shout outs to who I'm going to be recording with and whether you have any questions for them. So I have somebody who submits to magazines. I've got, I really want to just say the names. Uh, I've got um, somebody who runs crochet courses. I've got a indie yarn dyer. Somebody who has their own YouTube podcast and also somebody that's gonna be i hope he's not doing this when i record all of these chats with these people oh my god i'm like right i'm going in the car just wait with me while i set up in the car <laughs> um so yeah they're coming and they're going to tell you their tips their experience and how they make an income from this passion yarn um, and then I also have videos myself coming on um, how I got into pattern designing, how much I made from my first pattern release, the costs involved in all of that, um, all about setting up my website and the costs involved in that. So keep an eye out for that. I'm done competing with this noise now. I hope wherever you are that you're okay. Just know that you don't have to be 
sunshine and smiles all the time but sunshine sunshine and smiles is on its way to you so happy making take care and see you again soon